Welcome to Data Gathering Techniques for Process Mapping and Analysis. Today we're going to look at some techniques on how to gather data to start building your process map. If you have little to no experience, I would encourage you to review the other sessions before this one. The first thing we want to do before we start gathering data is be sure that we understand the scope of our process. We want to be able to understand what our start and end events are. It's worth noting that in manufacturing-based organizations versus service-based organizations, that their start and end events may be different. In manufacturing organizations, let's say like an automotive maker, they may receive parts from multiple suppliers, and their role is going to be to transform those physical parts into a vehicle. In a service-based organization, such as a financial services one, what they receive is not from a supplier of physical goods, but rather they may receive electronic requests or paper statements. It's important to note these differences in the physical goods and the electronic statements as well, as that may play a factor as you start gathering information. As mentioned in the previous sessions, it's important for us to always communicate the current state. So as we start gathering that information, we're going to want to validate that it is the current state and not the ideal state. The easiest way to start gathering information is to see what already exists. If you're working for an organization, they may have a process repository available with documented process maps. If not, they may also have training materials and procedures available that you could look through. This information becomes very important as these training materials will also give you a starting idea of where the process starts and where the process finishes. You will also want to check with your impacted stakeholders to see if they have any additional information available. They may already have information on that process on their team, or they may have already been looking at it. Seeing what they have available and gathering it will be helpful as a starting point for you. Whether or not you are able to gather pre-existing information, interviewing is a great starting point and validation. You will want to identify as many stakeholders as you can and start to have discussions with them. You would want to understand what their inputs are, so how they are receiving the requests, also what their process is, how they are transforming that request to complete their activities, and then further where the output goes so when they are completed, who receives that work. As you start having these discussions with them, you may also find that they do not have factual data. They may say to you that they don't fully understand where they receive the work or how that work is used after they've completed their task. You will want to try to get a sense of a gut feeling from them. That gut feeling information can be very helpful in some instances. Just be sure to document their level of confidence associated with that gut feeling data. And make sure that if you do find out that that gut feeling data is incorrect or correct, that you're communicating back with your stakeholders. Another practical way to gather information on your process is to look at the data. Are you able to gain access to productivity or tracking systems? If you are, you want to take a look at as much information as you can as it relates to your process. A couple of key points that you may be interested in are elapsed times, so knowing how long it takes for a specific step in a process to complete, as well as effort time, so how long it takes somebody to actually complete that activity. These two points become much more important in value stream mapping. However, as you start to build your process map, this will also give you insight as to any opportunities you may want to look at. You may also want to consider external sources of data. Do you have access to customer surveys? Within customer surveys, praise and complaints can often lead to information on how processes are operating. It can also give you insight into how a process is operating in the eyes of your customer, which is extremely important as you start to gather your information. Another surefire way to gather information on your process is a Gemba Walk. A Gemba Walk will give you access to seeing what your process looks like throughout all of the tasks and decision points. The way you could accomplish this through a manufacturing-based industry is to actually walk your production lines and see how the products are actually moving through each of the various stages. In a service-based industry, you could collect this information through electronic transactions. Let's say that we have an electronic request that's been submitted you could request to be notified as that request moves through the various teams. You could keep track of the start dates and start times as well as the end dates and end times. This will give you insight also into the unit costs, but also insight of all the stakeholders that are impacted by a given process. If you are able to physically monitor the process as well, it's not a bad idea to use a stopwatch of some sort to time to see how long each task takes. This also will give you additional information on the unit costs. How you approach these techniques will always be different depending on how you are and what you feel comfortable with. However, I have found that shock value statements are also a great tool to gather more information. 
When your stakeholders don't understand the process extremely well, sometimes making bold statements for that shock value will allow them to validate what it definitely can't be. Trust your instincts, make predictions. If something doesn't feel right, then take a look at it again. Make sure you feel comfortable with what it is you are mapping out. In addition, as you start learning more information about the process, you may start making predictions as to other impacted stakeholders. Be sure to pick up the phone or send them off an email. Find a way to communicate with them to validate what their impact is. Always communicate the current state. Be sure to validate the information you've collected on your process. If you're unsure about that information, I would encourage you to be transparent and share that this is how we believe the process is operating, but it couldn't be confirmed. This transparency will help build trust with your stakeholders and further push your credibility. And we're done. That concludes this session. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much.